How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome to another Dynamic Projectiles video. In this video we're going to be adding in a new weapon type. We're going to go to our object weapon and we're going to duplicate our bazooka and we're going to call this ID Laser. We're going to add in a laser gun. So let's double click on ID Laser. Let's zoom in and we should already have our origin points set up and our collision should be fine. So let's just redraw. Let's actually grab our colors. Let's go to our color picker tool. And it looks like I already have these colors selected from before, but if you haven't, just left click to get your color and then right click to get your secondary color, just like that. Cool, so let's take this image. Let's take our bazooka and you know what? Let's actually go off of our bazooka a little bit. Let's delete this. And what I want to do is I want to make this laser. So I want to make this like super bright green. And I want to just kind of illustrate that this is going to be our laser. So let's kind of have it go like this. And then let's have a highlight like this. Something like this kind of kind of cool weapon, maybe. Uh, let's control click for the shortcut to the picker tool. And maybe we'll kind of go like this or something. I'm not sure. I just want to illustrate that this is going to be our laser gun in some way. And that kind of doesn't work at all. Let's see. Let's see if we can draw this a little bit better. And I'll grab a, a right click. Usually when I try to draw on the spot, it doesn't work, and you can probably see why, but it's cool. I'm, I'm happy with this for right now. This can be our laser gun. Uh, if we need to make this better, I'm sure you can spend more time on your laser gun, and it'll look a lot better than mine at the moment. There we go. That's going to be our laser gun, and it's ID Laser. Our origin and bullet are already set up, as well as our collision, so let's exit out. Let's go into our player event. Let's copy and paste our bazooka and let's rename it. Let's call it our laser. And the next thing is we're going to want to play our laser sound. Now I've already imported a laser sound for us. So let's find our laser sound and import it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to need to draw its own projectile. So let's do that real fast. So we have our gun. Let's draw our laser. So let's double click. Let's make a new sprite and let's resize it to be 16 by 8. That way we have a longer width than height. And let's actually go to our origin because to utilize this width, we want to put the origin to the left, which is what we've been doing for every projectile. But this one in particular, we're going to be stretching it from the left to make it a longer laser-like projectile. So what we're going to do to draw this is we're going to take our paint bucket tool and we're going to fill it with our secondary color here. I'm going to right click and then I'm going to grab my line tool and use left click primary color to just kind of draw an outline here. And I'll leave this open a little bit. That way we can stretch from the left and it'll keep going. It won't be a boxed in stretch. So let me exit out of this. And let me call this our object laser. And let's give it two behaviors. The first behavior is going to be our fade. And our second behavior is going to be our pin. Now our fade behavior is going to handle it since this is a one off one shot bullet. It's going to fade and then destroy. So we don't need to actually change any of these properties. And our pin is going to pin to our object weapon. So let me move this off screen. And let's go to our player event. Let's go to our laser, and now our weapon will spawn, instead of our rocket, it will spawn our laser on the image point of bullet. So since it's going to spawn from the bullet, we're going to add the action to our laser to pin to the weapon. Where is the weapon? There it is. And let's put that over here right after it spawns. Then we can now tweak our settings. And this is the whole point of doing it dynamically because now it becomes just as easy as filling out these boxes right here. So we want our weapon rate to be a little bit faster. So 1.0. We want our weapon image to actually be the laser gun, not the bazooka. We want our knockback to be a little bit bigger here because it's a laser one shot like cannon effect. So we're going to put it to 0.4. We want our screen shake to be a little bit bigger, so something like 13, 14. But if it's going to be that much bigger, let's put it to 0.1 seconds long. Let's delete these rocket effects, and then let's replace this rocket object with our laser. Just like that, we're done with our laser type. So 
if I go down here and on B pressed, instead of going to the bazooka, I'm going to go to our laser. And later on, what you can do is you can actually make this a choose function. And you can say choose between the laser, the bazooka, and the, for just example, the pistol and the machine gun. And that way, every time you hit B, it's going to actually pick between these weapons every single time. So it'll cycle through all the weapons you give it. But since we're just kind of testing this out, let's just put it as the laser. So I'm gonna hit save and I'm gonna hit play. And I'm gonna hit B to bring up our laser. Cool, so our image changes. And I'm gonna hit X. <laughs> and perfect. Our laser is playing the audio. It has the nice knockback. Everything is working perfectly fine, except for our actual laser object. We want to set the width of it to be longer. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to our object laser, and we're going to type in set width. And what this is going to do is it's going to stretch it out. So let's stretch it to our layout width. And let's look at this. So when I hit save, and I hit play, and I hit B, and then I hit X to shoot, <coughs> Now, from where my character is, from where this laser is spawning, it's going to stretch out the entire layout width, which in this case is 640. But since I'm kind of standing in the middle, it's going to be a little bit less than 640. And that's how long it's going to be. If I go all the way over here, it's going to be a lot closer to 640. So this is really good because this is our laser effect. And that's what a laser does. It's a one-off bullet. It doesn't have the bullet uh, behavior attached to it. It just has this long effect. Now, if you wanted to add collision, you would put it in here, but we actually don't need to do it, that collision at all. And I actually have a duplicate of it. We, what we could do is we could just say, put this to our laser, but this would be more for like enemies because our laser doesn't really need to collide with a wall and actually destroy because it's going to fade out and destroy on its own, but you could have that control. And that's the benefit of doing these dynamic projectiles. But what we want to do to make it a little bit smaller, because our layout width might not be exactly what you're looking for. We're going to divide it by, let's try eight. Let's see how that goes. And by doing that, we should be able to get a shorter laser, something like that. So maybe that's a little bit too short. Maybe you want to divide by four. Maybe you want to divide by 12, something like that. There you go. That's still a little bit long, but at least you know you're cutting it in half. So let's kind of go... Let's try six and let's see if that's going to perfect. So that's pretty much our laser effect here. And then, you know, if we wanted to wait on our fade, we could do that. And this is really all on you at this point. How long do you want this to, to wait before it fades out? How, what do you want to do with this laser effect? There's just a lot of options at this point, but that's how we're going to do it. In a later video, I'm going to add a charge effect to it. So we are going to hold down X and that way it's going to wait before it fires. And I have some other videos planned where we're going to actually go and redo our project structure here because it's kind of all over the place. And it's about time that we clean this up a little bit, but that's how we can make a very simple laser effect. So I really do hope you're getting a lot out of these videos and you're finding it easy to just go in and make your own actual weapon types and just expand from what I've been teaching you. And again, I would love to see what you're working on. So if you have something cool, post it in the comments. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks so much for watching this video. Again, I'm Jeremy Alexander and I'll see you next time.